feels a little stuffy. Yeah, a little bit. <sighs> Much better. If you don't know, uh, we're hurricane hunters. Mm -hmm. uh, the Air Force has a unit which flies C-130s through hurricanes for research. It's been our dream job for a long time and we finally got there. It's just been a crazy year of trying to get trained up and to learn how to do this job. But the time has come for us to pack up. We've finished our training. We've knocked out a lot of storm flying in the 2020 hurricane season. Cause after all, this is just a part-time job for us. We really just wanted to share with you guys what we've been doing this year. You've been really yeah. patient with us. Sorry, <laughs> we've just been busy. So this year started with moving into this apartment. After we moved in, we had to do a lot of training. Uh, so we started out by going to the altitude chamber where basically you sit in a room, they take out all of the oxygen and you see how your body reacts without uh, any oxygen. You start to get a little loopy. Anyways, we did that training and then we both went to survival training, um, which took kind of a while. Uh, basically just spent a lot of time out in the woods in the winter in the Pacific Northwest. So that was also a good time. And then we just started flying all of our stuff here and then jumped right into one of the busiest hurricane seasons we've had in years. All the while handling the COVID crisis and all the changes that that brought with it. Not to mention that almost every weekend we had to drive back to our Houston house to make sure everything was fine because we live in two hurricane affected areas. But it's been a great time. So it's kind of a, I don't know, I have mixed feelings about moving out of this place. Also, we live on the third floor, so I'm dying. On one hand, it's really exciting because we finally get to go back to Houston, but on the other hand, we also don't really get to fly again for kind of a while. Hurricane season definitely still is not over. It's been one of the busiest seasons on record. This is the second time in history we've ever had to go to the Greek alphabet to start naming storms. The last time we did that was back in 2005, and we all know what happened there. So we feel kind of bad that we have to leave early because we want to stay and help out and fly more, but we've put off the business for quite a while now, and it's just time to get back. So you're probably right in asking, why do these two idiots fly through hurricanes? What, what makes it so important that they risk their lives flying through the world's most powerful natural disaster? And the answer to that is we need the data. Every storm is so unique and so different. If you're familiar with Tropical Tidbits, our buddy Levi does a fantastic job unofficially explaining what's going on with all of these hurricane systems. And there's just a lot of variables going on. It's crucially important that we send the data that we get from these hurricanes to the National Hurricane Center, which is the authority for determining where a hurricane is gonna go. So if you're trying to understand how all this fits together, all we do is data collection. So we just fly through the storms and then we send it to the National Hurricane Center, they make their forecasts, they issue advisories, they make sure everybody is up to date on what they think is gonna happen next. And you also might ask yourself, Davis, Jenny, with all of the satellites and pictures and reports and buoys and ships that are out in the ocean, why do we need to send an airplane through a hurricane? Well, the answer to that is the airplane can get unique data that no other source shows us. And Jenny has a very interesting story about that. Let me get her. So we have a certain mission type that we do that's called an invest or an investigative mission. The forecaster at the National Hurricane Center will see a spot on satellite where they think a tropical system could develop. On that type of mission, our only job is to see if there's closed circulation or not. One of the most interesting situations that I encountered on this last hurricane season was one of those missions. I was sent out just to see if a storm had any circulation or not. And once we got out there, we ended up not only seeing circulation, but we saw almost an entirely closed eye wall. So this was not only a storm with full circulation, but it was really intense, so much so that it had eye wall formation. And the National Hurricane Center right away started calling it a tropical storm based off of what we saw. So. We thought we were going out to a storm that may not even have any circulation, maybe it wasn't that strong, to, oh my goodness, we're seeing a tropical storm right now. And that ended up being what was Tropical Storm Nana. 
that ended up affecting Belize. So with all of the tools that we had available, nothing was showing that it was a tropical storm. It took an airplane flying through that area to figure out what was going on. So from there, the National Hurricane Center did a great job of forecasting and coordinating and getting the information out there so people knew how to respond so that they could stay safe. All right, so what does it feel like to fly through a hurricane? Um, the whole thing is crazy, but in a very good way. We have great pilots, they're amazing, they're so, so safe. So when we finally get to our point where we're entering the storm, we look out the window, you definitely start to see a lot of clouds, um, you get crazy views, and uh, as we cross into like the eye wall area, we do start to get a little bit of turbulence. It gets a little bumpy. Like when you fly commercially, when you get a little bit of turbulence, that's odd typically, and it goes away pretty fast. Well, for us, it's normal to have a little bit of turbulence. Um, and when we cross through into the eye and it's all calm, it's almost weird to not feel a little bit shaky. So it gets pretty busy while we're doing our job. And we're the meteorologists in the back of the plane. We're not pilots, we're not navigators. We are the flight directors. We're the ones that sit in the back. We can see all of the data that's coming in on the computer. And we're determining where we need to go to get closer to the center of the storm, what data we need to capture. So basically there are instruments on the plane that take measurements and we're always obtaining data from that. But we also drop weather instruments out of the back of the plane and that also gives us information. And while we're collecting all of this data, we're also flying around trying to find the exact center of the storm. That's what we're trained to do, is find that exact center. And once we do, we compile all that data into one big message and get that off to the National Hurricane Center so they know where the exact center is. And from there, it makes it much easier for them to forecast any movement. So we're not just out there flying around willy nilly wherever we want without a plan. Um, if you know anything about the military, there are lots of regulations. We know exactly what we're doing out there um, with a solid purpose and plan. So obviously we're very safe anytime we're out flying. So that was basically our entire job for the summer. We were getting trained and learning how to fly through these storms and locate the exact center. So where do you go to find tropical storms? Tropical Island. I got to travel to Hawaii to fly through Hurricane Douglas, and Davis and I both got to travel multiple times to the Virgin Islands to fly storms that were in the Atlantic. After we've been flying in the air for several hours, we got a little sick of being in the air. So what do we do? We jump in the water.
Jenny and I had an absolute blast picking up snorkeling as a hobby this year. I mean, it was so much fun just working and, and being with awesome people, learning a new job that was uh, super adventurous, uh, that was helping other people. But it wasn't lost on us that when these incredibly powerful storms make landfall, the people on the ground are not having fun. Jenny and I have fortunately never experienced um, being affected by a hurricane or anything like that. I mean, we haven't even seen hurricane damage before, but about a week after Hurricane Laura hit the Gulf Coast, we were gonna come back to the Houston house here and check on things. And we had to drive through Lake Charles to get here and we knew it was gonna be bad, but we had no idea it was gonna be this bad. just stuck in some traffic now on the other side of Lake Charles but man that was um, that was not fun to watch I can't even imagine what the people there are going through and just seeing their businesses destroyed and their homes and I, just tarps on every roof I mean I what was crazy to me and I don't know if you saw it in the video but it was just insane the number of trees that were just snapped in half we're talking like most of our audience is woodworkers like you guys know that like it's no small feat to break wood by force. You know, we, we use two and a half horsepower motors with a blade spinning at 5,000 RPM just to cut through it, a, a much less like bending and snapping in half. I mean, geez, um, Hurricane Laura really did a number out here and it's just important to s keep them in your thoughts and prayers. And man, and another thing that was encouraging to see was just hundreds of electrical bucket trucks just trying to bring power back. I mean, every stoplight was out. You just feel for those people. And I mean, that's one of the reasons that we do what we do. And, you know, with just trying to help keep people safe and get people to evacuate so that they don't have to live through that kind of um, disaster. You know, it's it, it still sucks all the way around. They're still going to have to come back to that in their homes and their businesses. But at least they got out of there in time, or at least most of them did. Man. That was, that was not fun to see. So after spending the summer around our new world of hurricanes and flying and our brand new job um, and seeing for the very first time what hurricane damage really looks like, we wanted to use our platform to help maybe in some way if we could. What we're gonna do is we have uh, a special t-shirt that we've created solely for hurricane relief. Here's a picture of the t-shirt, we'll put it up here for you. But basically all of the proceeds from this shirt are going to the American Red Cross to aid in disaster relief. None of this money is going to us. Every single penny of the proceeds are going to help disaster relief. And as we film this right now, Hurricane Delta is on its way to almost the exact same spot where Laura hit. So people are really going to need your help. And this is just one small way we could think of. So there's a link below in the description where you can find and order this t-shirt. Um, if you want to donate without getting the shirt, that's an option too. We've got a link below where you can just go to the site and make a direct donation. And if you're not able to make a donation, then go ahead and just share this video. We want to get eyeballs on the fact that, you know, we're trying to help and reach out. So that would help us out a ton too. Hopefully this is enough excitement uh, that we have earned a share and uh, we can get some more people um, helping with disaster relief.
Thanks so much for taking the time to check out this video. If you wanna figure out how you can donate, the links are all down below in the description. Also, if you wanna see more cool information and videos and pictures like this, follow our unit's social media pages. Those are all down in the description as well. And give this video a share. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.